Merhaba. I hadn't seen her in a year, but I'll take it. Somebody will get it to her. I'll make one for her and her baby. Good. Now nah, we, Jerry will. All right, it's just about time to start. Yes. Thank you for reminding me. It flashes when it's muted. At least it gets my attention. Uh, light on it. <clears throat> and you can tell easy. You can always remember to look at the bar. Right there. Lane, how are you doing? You've been to the Bahamas this week? No. Okay, we got Ruby and Mom listening. Jean Philpot, Jean, you might, I texted you earlier, you may not have seen it to see how you were feeling. I texted you uh, a little bit before 3 p.m. Glad you feel like listening. Got Jerry and Jerry, <laughs> it's just Jerry. It's, Jerry sent me a picture. Send me another one there, Jerry. See the uh, website there. It looks good. Got David Vanderstoop listening. Okay, we got Larry online. I think I said Ruby and Mom. So, Ken and Aaron. Okay, I think I got, uh, Alice is on YouTube, so. And here we've got Mike, Kathy, Elaine, Adam, and myself. Five of us. Got Sherry Edwards listening on TuneIn. All right, it is 6 o'clock. Let's go ahead and get started. It's good to have each one here. Continue to remember our sick. Ruby's with mom tonight. Uh, continue to remember Ruby's dad. And, uh, of course, mom and Ruby's dad and Alice and Ken and Aaron and Larry with his eye. And, uh, yeah, thanks for the picture there. Jerry looks good in the broadcast. And we added Chris Bush tonight here, so we got six. Ruby's with mom uh, tonight. But they're both listening. Let's go ahead and get started. And uh, Randall Lockett, uh, he's home doing better. And so he is back at his house, right? Yes. So, all right, number 227. It's good to have each one. It's been a cold day. Didn't get hardly above freezing during the day, though the official high is probably going to be 50 something near midnight. But I saw a lot of flowers in bloom coming, so they. Uh, over so they're really coming out oh and we've got Stuart Andrew and Sherry three listening from there number 227 a good uplifting song to begin our services with Okay, Adam's just asking to remember Ukraine, and as I've told him before, of course, it'll, you know, the Lord will work out things the way he wants it, and we do pray for the citizens there of Ukraine and Russia both, that they'll be able to have the gospel, the most important thing. And so, hopefully it'll work out very good. And so do pray for Ukraine, and, uh, and of course, Russia as well, and all, all the countries involved. And... Uh, 
but do pray for the Ukrainians and Christians there. I know uh, Adam has been there with the churches, right? Visiting some. You know, uh, I was with the study group, but uh, it was not with the churches. So. My uncle has actually done missionary work so. there. We know some people that are involved in the church. So, as Adam mentioned, it's a good prayer to certainly pray for those of Ukraine tonight. Uh, there's a couple of live feeds on YouTube that show Kiev live all the time. It's really interesting. They've really, I've been watching those. Uh, Kiev, of course, capital, I reckon it's the capital of Ukraine. And uh, we were watching, I couldn't help but almost chuckle, big old red Coca-Cola truck pulled up in front of a building making delivery. So for now, it's life as usual, but it's liable to change. And I pray that it doesn't for the worse, certainly. Number 227. On Zion's glorious summit stood a numerous host redeemed by blood. They him their king in strife divine. I heard the song and strove to join. I heard the song and strove to join. Hear all who suffered sword or flame, for truth or Jesus' lovely name. Shout victory now and hail the Lamb, and bow before the great I Am, and bow before the great I Am. While everlasting ages roll, eternal love shall feast their soul, and scenes of bliss forever new rise in succession to their view. Rise in succession to their view. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of host on high adore, who like me thy praise should sing, O almighty King, holy, holy, holy Lord, God a host on high the verse that they had with that song but I can't help but think of, of um, give me just a second here I didn't have had to do this uh, let me restart this give me just a moment I apologize for the delay here but I need to get it ready for uh, services anyway I was going to look at Revelation 14, but I'll do this in just a minute. Let me close everything here, and I'll get that going in just a minute. But a good verse for that song would have been Revelation 14, chapter uh, verse 1. Uh, apologize. I wanted to read that verse because I thought it was such a good one to go with the song. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion with him a hundred Forty and four thousand have in his father's name written in their foreheads. Okay, before our prayer, let's sing number six forty two, and then I'll lead our minds in prayer. Six hundred forty two. <clears throat> Let the lower lights be burning. Brightly beams our Father's mercy. 
from this lighthouse evermore. But to us he gives the keeping of the lights along the shore. Let the lower lights be burning, send a gleam across the way. Some poor fainting, struggling seaman, you may rescue, you may save. Dark the night of sin has settled, loud the angry billows roar. Eager eyes are watching, longing for the lights along the shore. Let the lower lights be burning, send a gleam across the way. Some poor fainting, struggling seaman, you may rescue, you may save. Trim your feet, pull at my brother, some poor sailor tempest tossed, trying now to make the harbor in the darkness may be lost. Let the lower lights be burning, send a gleam across the way. Some poor fainting, struggling seaman, you may rescue, you may save. Let us pray. Our fathers, we come to thee in prayer. We're thankful for this beautiful day that we've had, a darker day and a damp day, but where we know moisture from the rain yesterday and coming tomorrow will seep into the earth and prepare things for spring planting that's just right around the corner. We're thankful for our good warm homes, our good automobiles that are warm that bring us here, and the church building where we come together to meet as a congregation of your body. We're thankful it's warm and dry. And we pray that we will take advantage of each opportunity that we have to meet here because each one that we do not is, is one that's gone forever. And we do cherish the times that we can come together and that, that we are able to, that our government not only sanctions this, but has always encouraged it and we're free to do, and how that our government does just really keep hands off of worship services where we're not taxed for our contribution, that we're able to meet, and you've really given us a good time and place. We know that a lot of other places do not have this now. Uh, certainly, there's some very godless societies and governments, and we know that some are even getting worse. We do pray that you'll be with the situation in Ukraine, that uh, we know it'll work out the way that you want it to, and uh, that all the governments are set up and removed by you, but we pray that your will, that they'll not be invaded and their way of life be taken from them. And that most of all, the gospel can be taught there and to the to the Russian people as well and, and all the countries, uh, North Korea and China that are very far from you and many Southeast Asian countries. We pray that even if we can't go in person, that the things we do online and print, we can take the gospel. And if we canvas the whole world our whole lives and only bring one to you, we pray that uh, we know that it is worthwhile. But do bless uh, the Ukrainian situation. We pray world peace will be be kept. We live in a time of peace, and we pray it will maintain all of our lives. We pray that you'll be with the church at Mumfordville, that we can be a beacon of truth here in the community and throughout the world, and that we'll always proclaim your gospel and, and your word in simplicity and purity, not adding to nor taking from, because then it's not pure anymore. And we pray we'll just proclaim it as it is, and we know that so many do not. They add the ways of men to it and take away, and then it cannot save their souls. We pray you will keep us healthy all of our days so we can serve you and that we'll feel good all of our days. We know it's natural to be sick from time to time. 
but we pray our sickness is kept to a minimum. Be it those we mentioned earlier, bless mom and Ruby's dad. We pray that you'll be with Alice and with her pain and Ken and Aaron. We're thankful that Randall is doing okay. Bless him and Larry with his eye and pray that he'll be totally recovered as soon as possible and he can soon be back with us in the evenings. Keep us safe, protect us from the dangers of the world and most of all the spiritual dangers. We do humbly ask for an easy time of departure from this life. And then we can awaken on the glorious shores of heaven and dwell with you and the redeemed forevermore. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. All right, number 416. Footsteps of Jesus. 416. We'll sing two more and then have our class. Sweetly, Lord, have we heard thee calling, come, follow me. And we see where thy footprints falling, lead us to thee. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow steps of Jesus where'er they go. Though they lead o'er the cold, dark mountains, seeking his sheep, or along by Siloam's fountains, helping the weak. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus where'er we go. If they lead through the temple holy, preaching the word, or in homes of the poor and lonely, serving the Lord. Footprints of Jesus that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus where'er they go. By and by through the shining portals, turning our feet. We shall walk with the glad immortals, heaven's golden street. <clears throat> Prince of Jesus, that make the pathway glow. We will follow the steps of Jesus where'er they go. Before our class tonight, looks like it's just going to be one class, 144. Oh, worship the King. 144. Oh, worship the King, all glorious above, and gratefully sing His wonderful love. Our shield and defender, the ancient of days, pavilion in splendor and girded with praise. Thy bountiful care, what tongue can recite? It breathes in the air, it shines in the light. It streams from the hills, it descends to the plain, and sweetly distills it the dew and the rain. Frail children of dust and feeble as frail, in thee do we trust, nor find thee to fail. Thy mercies, how tender, how firm to the end, our Maker, Defender, Redeemer, and Friend. All right. We'll go over the questions here. Let me pull up this. Psalm 101 and 102. The first chapter is quite short. The second one's a little longer. We've got six people here, so we'll go around randomly. Uh, 
ask questions here. <clears throat> Next Wednesday evening will be March the 2nd. It's a little hard to believe that we're getting that far along into the year. All right, let me go ahead and just, we'll do the flashcards first, and I'll turn to the proper scripture. Psalm 101 and 102. All right, number one. Yeah. Elaine. Okay, it's uh, uh, Psalms 101, verse 1. I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I. Will I sing? All right. Number two. Chris. Okay, number three, Adam. Uh, chapter 102, verse 2. Okay. Hide not thy face for me in the day when I am troubled. Incline thine ear unto me in the day when I call, answer me speedily. All right. Number four. Mike. 102, verse 6. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I am like an owl of the desert. K number five has to be me or Kathy, so Kathy. Chapter one and two, verse twelve. But thou, O Lord, shall endure forever, and thou remembrance unto all generations. All right, number six, it is me. It's verse sixteen of chapter one hundred two. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. All right, four more, everybody back in. All right. Mike, number seven. 102, verse 19. For he hath looked down upon the height of his sanctuary from heaven, did the Lord behold the earth. Okay, number eight. Chris. 102, verse 21. To declare the name of the Lord in Zion. <clears throat> Okay, number nine, Elaine. 102, verse 25. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. All right. And number 10. It'll be either Mira or Kathy. All right, Kathy. Verse 27, chapter 102. But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. Okay, let's go over these two chapters. The first one's quite short. Well, eight verses. Psalm 101. So much in the Psalms is about singing, and that's what the word psalm means, a song. I will sing of mercy and judgment. Unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. A couple of subjects we could sing about in our singing, but His mercy and judgment and singing is directed toward the Lord and toward each other. As we know from the New Testament, we're told to teach and admonish one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. So singing was part of worship of the Old Testament. It's in the New Testament, and there's quite a bit about singing in heaven. So singing has always been something that the Lord has desired and enjoys, obviously, or He wouldn't have had us do it. You know, it's really different from talking. You can just tell a difference. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. So he says he will behave himself wisely in a perfect way. Uh, you know, we're not going to be perfect. We're not going to be sinless. But we need to as close as we can. This uh, perfect way here... I wanted to look up exactly what that it meant. 
It meant without blemish or completely. We're told, I think it's the last verse of Matthew chapter 5. Be therefore perfect as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. I'd probably do better to go to Matthew 6 and just back up one verse. I think it's Matthew 5.48. Be therefore perfect even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. It doesn't mean to be sinless. The word perfect here means, it's teleos, which means the end. Be complete. Reach your highest, your best. Always something to strive for. There's always something you can do to, you know, if you're even fixing up a house or, you know, just doing something around like that or yard work, you can always add a little bit more to it to make it a little bit better. Yard work might be a, a new bush or two this year. It might be some, uh, some you know, kind of uh, stone work that you do. You're always adding to to try to make it better. You do that when you add to a house. We do that with our lives. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. Use wisdom, and of course we're told in James 1 to pray for wisdom, and to behave in a perfect way. So as much as we can without sin. Oh, when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. Uh, it's interesting that here in the Old Testament he asks about the Lord, when will you come to him? So there was obviously hints they knew, and obviously this is inspired, to write about the Lord coming. I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. His spiritual house is what he's talking about. And interesting enough, the New Testament refers to our bodies as the temple of God and the temple of the Holy Spirit. I will set no wick this the rest of the chapter you're going to see. He really has to do with putting away evil from him. Just He doesn't even want to be around evil people. I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. He's not going to let himself see anything that's wicked. As I was reading this this afternoon, I thought about how much this applies today with the invention of television and movies and things that we can just sit and passively let images and words come right into us. He said, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. And that would be a good, you know, philosophy philosophy to follow whenever choosing what to watch and what to listen to. Don't set any wicked thing before your eyes. Then he says, I hate the work of them that turn aside. From about leaving the Lord, it shall not cleave to me. It says, I hate the work of those who fall away. It shall not cling to me. He's not going to let that of them fall away be part of him. So let's make sure that no matter what our friends and neighbors and even family within our houses might do, let's not let their falling away cling to us if they do. A fraud heart shall depart from me. I will know, not know a wicked person. He's talking about of himself here. We're going to know a lot of wicked people if you live in the world, if you work in the public. I'm sure, Kathy, at Walmart, not all of your co-workers are, you know, faithful members of the Lord's body. That's just the way the world is. Not everybody at school or if you work at the hospital. That's just simply you're going to be within the world. But he's not going to know that way of life. And this is the word forward, not forward, Forward is F-O-R-W-A-R-D, and that's not a misprint. It's F-R-O-W-A-R-D, which is sort of a tough word for me to say, forward heart. But if I look it up in the dictionary, F-R-O-W-A-R-D, forward, which uh, stubbornly, contrary, and disobedient, obstinate. That's a good definition of it. It's just someone who is disobedient. It's probably an older word. I doubt out of the King James Version you'll hear anybody use the word fraud. But perverse. It's such a sort of complex word to say. We're so used to forward that we don't want to reverse the R and O of fraud. But a fraud heart shall depart from me. He's not going to be disobedient and perverse. I will not know a wicked person. I will know no wicked thing. He's not going to be wicked. Not sinless, but he's not going to live that life. Whoso privately slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart will I not suffer. It seems almost like we have switched to speaking from the Lord's perspective here because of what he's going to do from the wicked. The Psalms I've noted in the past that we have studied have done that. They will switch from the viewpoint of the psalmist 
to the Lord. Whoso privately slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Whenever you talk negatively about people, the Lord doesn't want that. There's an old saying, if you can't say anything good, say nothing at all. And that's, that's, not, a, that's not a biblical quote, but it's certainly a biblical precept of say good things about people. Don't say negative things. If someone drags you into a situation that might be negatively speaking about someone, just simply, you're not required to answer. And Jesus, you know, once for Pilate there, opened not his mouth. And so you're not required to answer and can simply say, I just am not going to say, nor do I want to hear anything negative about so-and-so. And that will probably stop them from telling you. But whoso privately slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart will I not suffer. The Lord doesn't want... As a matter of fact, if you go back, we've looked at Proverbs before. The Lord said there were seven things that he hated. And uh, the first was what? Proud look. <laughs> More than one. I know Kathy and Mike both said that. And uh, maybe someone else. I couldn't quite hear. But these seven, these six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination to him. A proud look. I heard this read today. As a matter of fact, if you were listening to Bible readings tonight, you would have heard our chapter. Well, Revelation 1 just started... Oh, a few, about a minute ago. But you would have heard our chapter play tonight. I think it started about the time I was coming. I didn't actually hear our chapter, but I heard right after it. And so uh, I heard Proverbs read earlier today, and I heard that about the proud look, or this chapter I heard. But he's not going to suffer a high look and a proud heart. We want to be humble. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. And servitude here is a place of honor. Even the saved in heaven says they shall serve him. It's not that we're going to be something, doing something with labor. We will rest from our labors, but we serve him in our, obviously in heaven, our worship and singing and being with him. But mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. The Lord is watching. And he's seeing who is faithful so they can dwell with him. He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. And I think the context of the verse is after this life. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell within my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. And, of course, those that are outside of heaven, obviously, whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. That's in Revelation 22, is it 15? It's either 14 or 15. Uh, 15 for thou he's talking about outside of the city for thou are dogs and saucers of course dogs is a metaphor for unclean sinful people and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie and I knew where that verse was because I always really know the one that follows it I Jesus have sent my angel to testify unto you these things in the churches I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star so, he that worketh deceit shall not dwell in my house. Those who, are, who cheat and take advantage of others, deceive others, cannot be with the Lord. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. They never even are granted entrance. And the last verse of this chapter, I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. As we just read, Revelation twenty-two fifteen, those who will not enter into the city of the Lord, I early will I destroy uh, it says morning by morning. You know, he's, it's something that's done. We tend to do a lot of our work in the morning to get it done, to start the day. I know people that farm do. You don't wait until late in the day. This work, he's, it's just saying he's going to do it early, even though he's waiting thousands of years from the time of the establishment of the church. It's early to him because a thousand years is, is a day. All right, let's go into chapter 102. It's 20... <laughs> Eight verses, so I'll need to go a little bit quicker here. Hear my prayer, O Lord, and let my cry come unto thee. A simple request. He wants the Lord to hear his prayer. He feels in this chapter he's cast off. Hide not thy face from me in the day when I am in trouble. Incline thine ear unto me in the day when I call 
answer me speedily. That just begs to have Jeremiah 33, 3 read after that. Uh, because we just read, uh, I'll wait to, we just read, he said, in the day when I call, answer me speedily. Jeremiah 33, 3 says, this is the Lord, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And, of course, he said, hide not your face from me. We're told that our sins and iniquities have hid his face uh, from, <clears throat> from him. Isaiah 59, 2, But your iniquities have separated between you and your God, and your sins have hid his face from you, that he will not hear. So he asked the Lord to hide not his face, and to incline his ear, and to answer. And, you know, if we're sinning, the Lord, uh, it, it keeps the Lord from hearing us and answering in the way we desire. We can't live sinful lives, and if you will, have the Lord close to us. For my days are consumed like smoke, and my bones are burned as an hearth. Just simply that his life is just like nothing. It's, it just goes so quick. That's why he wants the Lord to hear him and answer. His days are like smoke. It just goes up like his bones are burned like a... A hearth is just, his life is just burned up and gone. It doesn't come back, something burned in a hearth. My heart is smitten and withered like grass, so that I forget to eat my bread. I was thinking about this earlier. When was the last time you forgot to eat? You know, there are times, maybe if you have an extremely busy day, that you things get away, that you just realize, I never did even eat a bite during this time. But it's probably pretty rare. But he was so stricken and withered like grass that he even forgot to eat. You'll see about his skin and bones in a moment. And that's also mentioned in, bon in Job about his bones and his flesh. By reason of the voice of my groaning, my bones cleave to my skin. So it seems to be whatever was bearing on him just was causing maybe weight loss. And, just, and that's referenced also in Job. Uh, of course, Job, you know, had lost ten children and everything else that he had. But he talks about his bones uh, cleaving to his to his flesh. Uh, I looked up bones. I looked up uh, probably too many. Job thirty three twenty one. His flesh is consumed away; they cannot be seen. His bones that were not seen stick out. So Job's bones were sticking out during this. So it's not uncommon. That's what was happening to the psalmist here. I am like a pelican of the wilderness. I'm like an owl of the desert. What does he mean by this? Well, I think just simply he's like just an animal that's out in the wild that no one's paying attention to. Just, he just feels like a, a, just a bird out in the wilderness, just alone and and no one really to care for him like a bird would be. No, the Lord cares for them, but he feels like he's just a, a pelican of the wilderness. He's like an owl of the desert, just probably removed from mankind. He mentions another bird. I watch and am as a sparrow alone upon the housetop. I think that's the key to those three animals. He's alone, just like a bird out in the wilderness. Just no mankind, no one caring for him, and uh, just the way that he felt. Even though, assuming David was the author of this, uh, he would have had a lot of people around him, but he felt alone. Probably because of the next verse. My enemies reproach me all the day, and they that are mad against me are sworn against me. So he had enemies, those that are, he said, mad who deride him. They swore an oath against him. For I have eaten ashes like bread, and mingled my drink with weeping. Just that, simply talking about his food, basically was like the ashes, just something that's burned. He's eating, he's having consumed ashes, the, the burning fire of this, which is a metaphor, but uh, mingled his drink with weeping, just great sorrow. And of course, ashes always represent people would sit in sackcloth and ashes. And what he's talking about probably is beyond setting in ashes, he's eating ashes like bread. And mingled my drink with weeping. Because of thine indignation, thy wrath. For thou hast lifted me up and cast me down. This is possibly after David was told that, you know, the sword would never depart his house. 
but that of the Lord, the wrath against him, he lifted him up and cast him down. David did have great problems in his house because of his sin with Bathsheba and killing her husband. And the sword would never depart his house. My days are like a shadow that declineth, and I am withered like grass. That's twice he's talking about being withered like grass. Grass just dries up and goes away. But his days are like a shadow that lengthens. A shadow in the late day when we see the sun, it just naturally lengthens. I mean, you know, that's just simple physics that we can see. A shadow gets long. And that's the way his days are. They just keeps going down, and they're not coming back. A shadow at sunset is not going to get shorter. It'll just keep longer till it disappears, and that's the way his life was. And then he switches to the Lord in contrast, but thou, O Lord, shalt endure forever, and thy remembrance unto all generations. The Lord is forever, and Throughout all generations he's remembered. Thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time is come. I feel like there's probably some references to the church because the church is a feminine word. The church is the bride of Christ and is referred to her, uh, the church or Zion here in the feminine. Uh, but he's going to arise and have mercy upon Zion. That would represent God's people for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time has come. For thy servants take pleasure in her stones and favor the dust thereof. So I was reading that. I was saying, first of all, we, the stones of Zion, are us. We're told, Peter wrote, that we, you are lively stones. Of course, Jesus is the chief cornerstone, but we are stones. We're the lively stones uh, within the church. You also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house. And Jesus is the chief cornerstone. Uh, he's become the head of the corner. He was set in all to the builders. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So stones is a very fitting word to represent Zion in the church. With Jesus is the chief cornerstone and we're the lively stones. But the servants take pleasure within the church, within Zion, and of her stones, and even favor the dust, it says, uh, and favor the dust thereof. He's asking them to show favor to her dust. It's probably somewhat a play on words. Any stone's going to have dust. If you set a stone in the building, some dust is going to be there just naturally, uh, and uh, very dusty at times. But probably just a play on words that take pleasure in her stones where the stones in favor of the dust even the stones that are simply just a piece of dust you know it takes dust within the within the mortar and all to build the house some of us may be larger stones some of us may be very small stones even dust but i think it's just a play on words take pleasure in her stones thy servants do in favor of the dust thereof and of course we're we're told we're dust and we're made from dust so the heathen shall fear the name of the lord and all the kings of earth thy glory. Now some may not now, but people will see the Lord and will fear his name and all the kings of the earth thy glory. They will see it. And of course, we're the kings of the earth as well. When the Lord shall build up Zion, he shall appear in his glory. Probably talking about the church and Jesus coming, appearing in his glory. And probably also talking about the end. The first song we sung tonight was on Zion's glorious summit. I didn't plan it, actually. It just worked out that way. It seems like it happens a lot. Uh, the Lord just lets it work out. But when Zion is built up, he shall appear in his glory. We will see the Lord. And Zion represents heaven as well. He will regard the prayer of the destitute and not despise their prayer. Pretty simple to understand, but he, he, those who are down and out, he regards their prayer. Obviously, those that are serving him and not despise their prayer. This shall be written for the generation to come. And the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. Of course, the things he's written will be for the generation to come. This will be read. We're reading it. This is probably close to 3,000 years later, probably more 25, 2,700 years after this was written. But when I was reading this this afternoon, this phrase really struck me. And obviously, I've read it many times. We have all together. But, and the people which shall be created... That indicates there are people who have yet to be created. We know that's the case. 
if the world stands for another 100 years, there's going to be a whole new set of people. 100 years from this moment, February 23rd, 2122, almost no one living now will be alive. There may be a few babies now, but you can stretch it out to 150 years. It'll be a whole new set of people. A lot of people shall be created in the next 100, 150 years if the world stands. And so, these things are written for the generation to come, and the people which shall be created shall praise the Lord. That's why it's so important for us to preach and to teach and to leave the uh, solid teaching for generations to pass on, because there's people yet to be created that are going to be praising the Lord. For he hath looked down from the height of his sanctuary, from heaven did the Lord behold the earth. He looks upon the earth from the height of his sanctuary where he's at, uh, from heaven he beholds the earth to hear the groaning of the prisoner to loose those that are appointed to death the Lord knows people who groan and cry out to him to loose those that are appointed to death not everybody obviously is going to be loose from prison that's appointed to death but spiritual death I think that's what he's talking about he's made it where we can be loosed those and we all were appointed to death if we're not in the Lord to declare the name of the Lord in Zion and his praise in Jerusalem. The thought continues here, but uh, let me read the next verse. When the people are gathered together and the kingdoms to serve the Lord. So when we come together to serve the Lord, we declare his name in Zion within the church, his praise in Jerusalem. When we're gathered together in the kingdoms to serve the Lord. He weakened my strength in the way. He shortened my days. As mankind... We know our weakness. Our strength does get weak. I think in the way as we live. Uh, there's a passage in the New Testament to make it right with your brother whilst thou art in the way with him. The way in that context refers to this life. The way that we're going. This, this living that we're doing. He weakened, he weakened my strength in the way. As we grow older we will become weaker. That's natural. He shortened my days. They are getting nearer. If you were here last Wednesday night, you have seven less days to live than you did last Wednesday night. And, you know, that's a sobering thought. Seven are gone. How many more will I have? I mean, I have today. I may have, well, I could have maybe 6,000. May, I might have 9,000 days. That would be close to 30 years. Not necessarily. Probably not. But the days are getting shorter. I said, O oh my God, take me not away in the midst of my days. Thy years are throughout all generations. He realized how short his life is and asked not to be taken away. And the Lord's throughout all generations. We all want to live, but yet we look forward to being with the Lord. A few more verses. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works, or the work of thy hands. Wherever you behold the skies, whether it's sun, moon, or stars, or simply the clouds, know that it's the work of God's hand. From the foundation of the earth to the heavens is the work of His hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. Of course, we know from Peter writing that the elements will melt with fervent heat. I got to thinking about that the other day. Scientists say the surface of the sun is about 10,000 degrees. That's hot, but we can create temperatures like that easy on Earth in various furnaces or, you know, laboratories. Adam? I'm sorry. It was, uh, I know it was Bible class. So it's better. I was just uh, reading about, like, fusion or something. Yeah. Because it has, I think it's actually significantly harder than the interior of the sun to actually work. And if they have something, like, suspended in air, because... You can't touch anything, but if you have a suspended air, you can actually get magnitudes hotter than the sun. You can. Time, time. Adam was commenting in laboratories, and obviously physicists, they can create uh, temperatures hotter than, you know, the center of the sun. Yeah, uh, just for a brief, sometimes millisecond or probably less. But the center of the sun, they say, is about, and the point I was going to make, and that's a good point that he made, because I saw something about that not long ago. And uh, maybe the middle of the sun, they estimate, is probably 27 million degrees or so. I mean, it's astronomically hot, literally astronomically. But my whole point I was going to make 
the Lord said the elements will melt with fervent heat. If he creates enough heat to melt the sun, just that's staggering to think about. But they'll be changed. They'll wax old. He's going to change them. Obviously, for the saved in heaven, there'll be a whole new something that we see beyond what we can imagine. They shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years have no end. I do think of Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not going to change. His years have no end. Our last verse tonight, the children of thy servants shall continue, and thy, their seed shall be established before thee. So that's part of the teaching and passing on generations. The children of thy servants shall continue. Their seed shall be established before thee. The Lord lives forever, and so throughout time, people will serve him. All right, we will stop there then. I do have lessons to pass out for next week. It's one chapter only because it is 22 verses. It went just slightly over, but not much. Did I announce a song? Okay, I didn't think I did, so I'm going to change it. I was looking to see if it's in his book, As the Life of a Flower. Ruby's keeping a list of songs that are not in this book, and I don't see that, As the Life of a Flower. Let's see, what did I pick? I had picked, uh, did I did number 904. I would written it down. Have you been to Jesus? I think I'll just read this verse that we realize how quickly the things are going to pass away. Even the heavens about us, they shall perish, but thou shalt endure. They'll wax old as a garment, as a vesture, so thou change them, they shall not be changed. And then we just see, he asks not to be taken away in the midst of his days. It is normal to pray for long life. And so, but what we want is eternal life. Life here is not enough. It's only a few years. At best, 80 to 90, maybe 100. And that's very rare. But what we want is eternal life. I know everyone here, and most likely everyone listening live has obeyed the Lord in baptism. But if you're listening and haven't, uh, study the word study with us believe on the Lord but turn from your sins and repentance we're told to confess his name we're told to be baptized to wash away our sins and then we live faithful for the Lord he said his commands are not grievous they're not hard to do we just need to do them we'll sing the first verse of number 904 as we stand have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power are you washed in the blood of the Lamb are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are you garment spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Okay, got a couple of texts. Erin said she just heard from Heather, Ken's middle daughter. I remember Heather. She has COVID again. She feels okay and has been to the doctor. Uh, I just heard from Stuart. He's in Orange, Texas. Let's see what the weather is in Orange, Texas. Well, 52, it's pretty cool. But he texted me yesterday. He was in Laredo, Texas, so I looked up the weather. It was supposed to be 96 nearly a hundred so he said it was hot down that way and that is so glad to have Stuart listening with us while he's on the road is there anything else all right do keep our sick in mind mom and Ruby's dad Alice and Ken and Aaron and Larry with his eye do remember the situation Ukraine that'd be good to pray for daily that it works out with them and just peace in the world and of course it will affect us too you know obviously 615 I had is the last I've been 
writing down my songs ahead of time because I don't know these numbers yet. That's a good thing to do anyway, plan out your songs. 615. Let's sing this song and then we'll have Adam to dismiss us. One verse of 615. There's within my heart a melody Jesus whispers sweet and low Fear not, I am with thee, peace be still In all love's life's ebb and flow Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Sweetest name I know Fills my every longing Keeps me singing as I go